1620, the Mayflower embarked on a famous voyage from Plymouth, England to the New World, carrying a group of English separatists known as the Pilgrims. It would be these people that would establish the first permanent European settlement in North America. But did you know that the Mayflower also carried with it a man who would become the first person to be lawfully convicted of murder in the New World? I am your host, Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. The Mayflower set sail on September 6, 1620, and after a challenging journey that lasted about 66 days, it arrived in Cape Cod, present-day Massachusetts, on November 21, 1620. The Pilgrims initially intended to settle near the mouth of the Hudson River, within the boundaries of the Virginia Company's territory. However, due to bad weather and navigational challenges, they ended up further north. The Pilgrims sought religious freedom and wanted to establish a colony where they could practice their faith without persecution, and before this embarking, they drafted the Mayflower Compact, a document that established a form of self-government for the new colony and set the precedent for democratic governance in the future United States. John Billington was one of the passengers aboard the Mayflower, and one that would play a notable role in the early history of the Plymouth colony. Unlike many of the other passengers who were seeking religious freedom, John Billington was not a separatist. He, along with his wife, Eleanor, and their two teenage sons, John and Francis, belonged to a group of passengers known as strangers that were not part of the Pilgrims' religious congregation. The disruptiveness of the Billington family became apparent soon after the ship set sail for the New World. The first issue involved John's son Francis, who accidentally fired his father's musket near an open barrel of gunpowder residing in the ship's hull. Only the quick response of another passenger, who struck at the gun as it was firing, saved the Pilgrims from disaster. According to historians George Willinson and Michael Powell, John Billington became became one of the primary driving forces behind the ship's now all-but-forgotten mutiny. The Mayflower had 102 passengers on board, 50 of whom were men, 19 women, and 33 young adults and children. More important is the fact that the so-called stranger John Billington was part of the common folk majority as only 41 individuals on the ship were pilgrims who signed a contract with the Virginia Company to settle in Northern Virginia. Yet when the Mayflower landed in Massachusetts instead of Virginia, the strangers of the group argued that since they were no longer in Virginia territory, they no longer had to follow any rules set forth by the Virginia Company Charter, nor submit themselves under any governing body. Billington spoke loudly for what amounted to anarchy before he was silenced by the Pilgrim leader William Bradford, who suggested creating a temporary set of laws for ruling themselves as per majority agreement, the famous Mayflower Compact. Not long after landing in Plymouth, John Billington once again found himself in trouble when he was charged with contempt of the captain's lawful command with opprobrious speech against the colony's leaders. He was sentenced to public humiliation by having his neck and feet tied together. The troublesome individual, who was still trying to incite a rebellion, was, however, forgiven after profusely apologizing and stressing that it was his first official offense. Upon their arrival in November of 1620, the Pilgrims faced the immediate challenge of constructing a suitable shelter in the harsh New England winter. They initially lived on the Mayflower while constructing basing structures, but once they moved on land, they struggled with diseases like scurvy and exposure to cold, damp conditions. The lack of proper nutrition contributed to their weakened state. By the end of the winter, nearly half of the original Mayflower passengers had died. Ironically, the family everyone saw as troublemakers, the Billingtons, were the only one to not lose any of its members that winter. John's wife Eleanor was in fact only one of five adult women to survive the first winter and participate in the famous first Thanksgiving in 1621. As the years progressed, John and his sons became notorious for their many exploits, not all well viewed by the colonists. Francis would often disappear for days seeking new discoveries, which included a lake that he named Billington Sea, which it is still called today. John would take much longer leaves, and finding a woman from a local tribe would stay living away with Native Americans for months at a time. In 1624, John Billington became implicated in the Lifford Scandal, a failed revolt against the Plymouth Colony's pilgrim leadership. Two traders and influential members of the colony, Lifford and Alden, wrote secret letters to England, intending to send them to the colony's financial backers and authorities. In these letters, they criticized the pilgrim leaders, accused them of misconduct, and
and sought support for their cause. A thorough investigation took place, and the contents of the letters were exposed. Lifford and Oldham were found guilty of conspiracy against the colony and attempting to subvert its leadership. The two men were not banished, but simply fell out of favor at the colony, along with John Billington, who appeared to be their biggest co-conspirator. Still, the court could not find enough evidence to convict them. Billington had no social status in the colony. He was not a member of the church and was now excluded from all public office due to his bad reputation. To make matters worse, it appears that John Jr. had either gone missing or died, with no historical evidence pointing to what happened to him during this time. John Sr.'s anger and frustration at his situation grew until it finally got the better of him during a dispute with his neighbor, John Newcomen, in 1630. The reason for the quarrel had been lost to history, but the court files point to Billington chasing Newcomen through the fields and woods near their property and shooting him down in cold blood with a musket, the projectile striking the fallen man's neck. John Billington was tried and found guilty by plain and notorious evidence and publicly hung on September 30th, 1630. He became the first Englishman to be hanged in New England. Billington's burial location is unknown, but likely he was buried on his property, as was the custom at the time. Still, this was not the end of Billington troubles in Massachusetts. Six years after her husband's death, Eleanor accused the colony's deacon and former assistant governor of having an affair with her, for which she was sentenced to sit in the stocks for six days. The surviving son Francis Billington married and had nine children. He and his new family moved away to distance themselves from the parents' tarnished reputation. He would die of old age in 1684. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Don't forget to check out History Shorts on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your shows. You can also visit HistoryShortsPodcast.com.